Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Hey. Happy Father's Day. All right, y'all. So this morning, it's a good day to stand up and stretch. Get ready. We're going to do some praise aerobics together. I'm just kidding. We're not doing praise aerobics. But I do want you to go ahead and stand up on your feet with us this morning. This is the day that we celebrate, first and foremost, our Heavenly Father. And we're so grateful for you, Heavenly Father. We just thank you that in all things, you, you considered us, God, from the beginning of time. Father, we thank you. Come on, say this when we say, Heavenly Father, your grace is enough. Come on, sing it out. Your grace is enough. All right, here we go now. Let's get ready to worship Jesus this morning. Great. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with a 
sinner's restless heart You lead us by still waters into mercy And nothing can keep us apart So remember So remember your people Remember your children Remember your promise, oh God. Justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. Everybody sing along. And all your people sing along. So remember, so remember. So God, cause your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Cause your grace, your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough. children remember your promise so oh god oh remember oh remember your people remember your children remember your promise so oh god come on let's sing your great three your one two your grace is enough come on now it's your grace is enough. Yes, it is. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is heaven touches earth. And then heaven touches earth. Your grace is enough for me. God, I sing your grace. I am covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me. Come on, let's give a big shout out to the Lord this morning for your grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father.
we love you, God.
is who you are. That is who you are. Yes, it is. That is who you are. 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 Yes, it is. That is who you are. That is who you are. Come on, so even when I can't see it. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. That's right. You never stop, you never stop. Even when I can't see it, even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Oh. 
glory is the Lord. Everything is His. The earth is His and the fullness thereof. Can we just begin to lift our praises unto the Lamb of God who's worthy of it all, who gave it all, who the glory belongs to Him. All of it, all of it, all of it. Can we just get outside of ourselves today? Can we just get a little Because it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Come on. All of the glory, all of the glory. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory. It's yours, it's yours.
Some of y'all came this morning needing to encounter Jesus. Now is the time. The way you get to the Father is through worship, through praise, through humbling yourself. Come into this place of worship with us this morning. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve. Just sing out, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Come on and honor the king. He's in the room. You deserve the glory. Oh, we just give you all the glory right now. If the king were in the room, what would you do? Would you bow? What would you do before the king?
217 the Bible says honor all men love the brotherhood fear God and honor the king this morning we honor the king we fear God and we honor our God this time of worship together I pray that you engaged and that you really got closer to the heavenly father that you sense his presence the awareness of that beautiful time together as a family just honoring God and even as we honor God we're honoring each other we're loving each other so Jesus we honor you Father God we fear you we honor our King we honor you God we honor the King so Jesus we just thank you so much for your presence in this place your mouth. You're worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worth it all. God, you are worth it all. You are worth it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worth it all. Everything I have, God, you're worth it, Lord. Laying down everything for you is a privilege. You're worth it all.
to you are all things. You deserve it. You deserve the glory. Come on, give him the glory in this place right now. Come on, yes, Lord. same respect the scripture says love the brotherhood take a couple of minutes walk around and go love on somebody will ya go ahead Happy Father's Day. And I don't, uh, I can't think of a better way than uh, my dad uh, has a song that he's going to minister to us this morning. So he's a little, little nervous, but, you know, in the Goss family, we learn to turn nervousness into anointing. So you ready, sir? Go ahead. I suppose. It's been a long time. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Hallelujah. God's good, ain't he?
Brother Mike, come on up and receive our tithe and offering this morning. Sometimes it's really tough to transition from, you know, a heaviness of the spirit into uh, the money thing. But isn't God good? You know, it's a blessing to be here with you this morning to experience the Lord to, and I'll just say it this way, to have a God encounter. I really wasn't expecting David, I mean, not David, but Kenneth to sing today. And it's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's been a long time since I've heard him sing. I remember years ago when we first came into the fellowship of this church, uh, 
Kenneth was pretty active. Well, he and Renee as well. But uh, I've been blessed many times by his singing and by his pray, uh, playing. Uh, but God encounters happen to us all the time. And, you know, sometimes we have to get self out of the way before we can really encounter God, right? We were talking in class up, up today about forgiveness, and I know David's done mentioned it as well. But it's important that we have a clean heart, a right spirit with God. Amen? And, you know, uh, giving is, is, is a concept I know that uh, it takes a broad spectrum as we perceive how we need to give. Uh, a lot of times our giving is based on our encounters with God. And it's almost like, well, if God holds back from me, I'm going to hold back from God. But, you know, having some reverse psychology here, what's important that we really understand is, is that what we release or what we give, it's given back, isn't it? If we're waiting on God to do it first, I would say your wait's going to be a long time if you have that mindset. But the Bible says as you give or as we give, it's giving back, isn't it? Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. So it's us first. God has it in his hand. The thing we're trying to do is get to get God's hand to do this, to give back. And it's a moving thing on, on our part, on the part of his children. I'll give you a, a couple of examples. Uh, how many of you love the glory of God? I mean, we, we experienced some of it here this morning, right? Uh, I heard a testimony of a, an event, a revival, if you will, going on in, in, in Brazil, and, and I can't remember the, the minister or those that were involved with it, but the, part of the testimony was, was that some of them had an opening open vision and as they were hundreds within this uh, uh, compound worshiping the Lord uh, all of a sudden feathers begin to fall and it wasn't from birds either it was said that it, that it was from angels because that's what part of the open vision was all about and as, as much or as awesome as it would be to be able to you know, look at these feathers falling. The people weren't concerned with the feathers. What they were concerned with or what they were interested in was what happened before they started falling. See? And then <clears throat> I've heard testimonies, and I'm sure you have too, of, of God encounters where people would come out of revivals or events and that have gold dust on their clothing. Well, the amazing thing, is, as, as amazing as that would be, it's not the fact that let's be spectators of all the gold that might be on somebody's shoulders, but what happened prior to that? What was going on or, or what was given back to God? As you think about God encounters, how, how often do we as, as individuals uh, go through our daily lives and, and, and have a have often have thoughts in our mind that would what do I need to do to give glory to God? What do I need to do? What do I need to become involved with? And of course we ask the Lord for that, right? That those directions. To be able to receive what God has for you and I on a daily basis, more than just, you know, one counter a day, but I want lots of encounters with God. Amen? To be bombarded, you know, over, overweighted, if you will, with, with the glory of God would be awesome to have that glory in your life. If God's glory is based on measure, and here's, here's the thought, how much are we, we really giving God glory? If you want glory, guess what we have to do? Give God glory. Give God glory. Be a part of, of, of daily events and saying, God, this is, 
this is for you. I don't understand it all the time, but this is for you. Amen? You know, giving, giving of your finances, sometimes we just don't understand that. And, and sometimes it hurts. I, I've heard Brother Randy say, just give till it hurts. <laughs> uh, you know, and all you can do is that, just say, oh, me. But I know there's a scripture in uh, Matthew chapter 5. It says that if you bring your gift to the altar and you have ought against your brother, leave it there and go to your brother. In other words, there's something here that, that God is concerned with, and it's about forgiveness, isn't it? Not to have ought against people when we bring our tithes and offer. Because it's easy just to bring a tithe and offering and walk away and say, well, I, I brought my tithes and my offerings and not really think about, well, is my blessing going to come? Because sometimes your blessing can be hindered. Right? It can be hindered. So it's important that you and I as, as we look for God encounters, we understand that there's one thing that can keep us from having a God encounter, and that's having bed and odds with one another. And I know there's many other, but this is where the Holy Spirit's led me today, so this is what I'm sharing with you. It's very important that you and I in our lives that we get all unforgiveness behind us. And some of you may be saying, well... The one that I have an issue with is, isn't here anymore. Well, that's okay. That's between you and God. Amen? To be released, to be freed, to where you're, at, you're able to say, God, I have, I have not ought against any man. But that's a part of giving glory to God. Walking with a clean heart. A clean spirit, if you will. But God is able to deliver us from all darkness, isn't he? Hallelujah. And it's not based on what we do. It's not based on just the, fear, the, the pure fact that you have given a, a, of, of finances or, or of your resources, whatever that may be. And one other concept that we talked about this morning was, was the guy begging for alms. And then Peter and John, they went to him. And said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I give thee. And what, what, did, what did he receive? Health, wouldn't it? He wanted money, which again would have probably been gone that evening or the next day, and he would have been just like he was before. But what did God give him? He gave him something he wasn't expecting, but he gave him something that would help him to continually get money but it wasn't what he was thinking about at the time. So God blesses us in many ways. And sometimes it's not the way you think. But God knows best, doesn't he? Hallelujah. If you brought your tithes today, a cash uh, uh, gift, there, there are envelopes and the chairs in front of you, and you can use one of those. We appreciate you giving online. You know, whether you give online or not, we're still going to bless it today. As a corporate body, we're just going to release it into the kingdom of God. And by doing that, God, is, God will multiply what you release into the kingdom. We've seen that in the example of, of Jesus feeding the thousands, right? He took something that was natural and placed it back into the kingdom, and God was able to multiply it. And so that's what we're going to do today. If you would, just stand up with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father Ushers, if you want to come. Hallelujah. If you would, just hold, hold your hand up if you've given online or, or hold your money up. Father, we just give you praise and we thank you, Lord, that your word itself says that we are blessed. Blessed in our going out and our coming in, rising up and in our laying down. So, Father, Lord, we give a portion back to you, back into the kingdom. Lord, that whereby the kingdom, Father, continues throughout all eternity. Not based on money, Father, but based on the love of people. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that we are blessed 
and are receiving. Press down, shaking together and running over. Father, we bind this, these, these gifts, tithes and offerings into the kingdom and follow that neither rust nor moth would come and corrupt in any way. But it be used for your glory, for the expansion of the kingdom. Lord, for the healing of souls, for the building, Father, of the body here in this earth. Father, we bind these monies into the kingdom, Father, for your glory and for your glory only. We thank you, Father, for the provisions that you have given us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we bind these together right now in Jesus' name for your glory, for your direction, Father. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. All right, go ahead and take your seats as the ushers come around. I tell you what, asking Mike Dindy to take the offerings, kind of like going to McDonald's, ordering a cheeseburger, and they give you a bacon wrap filet mignon instead. You just get so much good stuff in there, and it ain't even funny. And and also, you started preaching my message next week. Thank you, sir. You must have had that gift of knowledge going on there. Well, hey, I want to give you just a few quick matters of family business as I set up the stage here. First off, in if you are a Wednesday comer, a Wednesday comer, in July, we are going to take a break from Wednesday activities. So adult Bible study, youth group. Uh, kids church we're going to take a break in july okay so that's that the however however we are going to do this really neat little summer gathering where i uh, believe we next week will have a sign-up sheet so starting july the 11th we will have service on the 4th if you can come you please come if you can't we understand but on july the 11th um, I, in our leadership team, who I'm going to tell about this right now, hey guys, um, we want to host five families per Sunday here for a after service lunch. So we're going to have a sign up sheet in the back. We're going to provide the lunch. Like first week, we'll probably like chicken fingers and barbecue. And during that time, you five families who signed up come. We're going to feed you. You're just going to get to hear from us as leadership, and we'll probably even do some, um, I guess you can say, um, be thinking of questions that you have or ideas that you might have for the church. Write them down, hand them to us, and we'll talk about it. So we're going to start with five families on the 11th, five families on the 18th, five families on the 25th, and if we need to do another Sunday, we will. But again, we'll have a sign-up sheet for that in the back. I have one other announcement, is that even though, kids, you are here today... On July the 18th, parents, and that's in like a month-ish, we are going to have an all-day VBS. 17th, that's what I meant to say, 17th. Thank you, Miss Brittany. July 17th, an all-day VBS, and the animal man's coming. Yes! So if you have kids between the ages of 5 and 11, and guests are welcome to come, absolutely. Uh, Please, it's going to be a fantabulous, memorable day the other thing i had is happy father's day hey kids can you help me give some gifts to some dads yes please pick me pick me all right so if you're a kid can you come especially if you have a father here will you get ready to come take a bag and take it to your father and then if we have dads whose kids aren't here okay adults i'm so sorry i forgot adults if you're an adult and you have a father here. Come on up. I, I, I nominate my sister, Christy. Oh, never mind. Addie Kate already did it. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Psst, Addie Kate. I want my gift from you. Thank you, baby girl. Hey, if you're a father in here and you have been missed, will you raise your hand? Uh Uh-oh, we got two back in the back there, one there, two there. Everybody, adults, I mean dads, if you raise your hand, you haven't got one, awesome. And I think we got some coming up top too. Somebody may have to throw Jason's way up there. (laughs) So I have been told, fathers, that the color of the tissue is significant for something. The light blue tissue represents the newness of fatherhood and the dependence on God. The medium blue tissue 
represents midlife fatherhood and greater trusting in God. Deeper blue, the aging fatherhood and greater wisdom from God. The green represents growth that comes from our Heavenly Father to fathers and then to children. And the yellow is the light of God that shines in and through each father to their children to guide them every day. So that is awesome. Well, I'm very excited because now we get to have our Father's Day panel. In alphabetical order, will you please help me welcome to the stage also the elders here of the church, Mr. Kenneth Goss. Yay! Next in alphabetical order is Mr. Mike Dindy. Yay! And then finally, the one and only Ron Solo Schrader. Yeah! Come on up, gentlemen. Take a chair. We're going to have a conversation today. Mutt, we have one more microphone, you all. So I, I have to confess, I did give these guys the questions in advance. Yes, sir. We'll have one more microphone coming in just a minute. And uh, they're hard. <laughs> so it's why I gave it to them in advance. Okay. So first off, gentlemen, we're just going to go down the row here. Tell us your name. Well, introduce yourself. Whatever you want to say in your introduction, go. Hello. <laughs> I'm Kenneth, Kenneth Goss, and I'm glad to be here today. I'm Mike, uh, Mike Dindy, uh, the father of two and the grandfather of, of, of four, uh, from 36-year-old to, to 10. I'm Ron Schrader, yes, thank you. <laughs> wow. The power. That's why we call him Ron Solo, forget Han Solo. <laughs> Uh, I have two wonderful girls uh, that I'm the father of. I like to make faces and be funny sometimes. Yes, yes. All right, cool. All right, so here's what we have been asked, gentlemen. They're asking us if we will scoot our chairs forward. Here we go. Let's do a community scoot. One, two, three. <laughs> do I need to push you? <laughs> I'm a little jealous of Ron's chair over there. It's a rocking chair. It was a Father's Day gift, actually, about two, three years ago. Nice. Very perfect for today. All right. Question number one, gentlemen of the jury. What did you have as a child that kids do not have today? Go. Me? Well, you're alphabetical, so sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, the kids don't have today. We had black and white TV. <laughs> And an outhouse. <laughs> and the, mostly the opportunity, the opportunity to experience life without electronics and, and technology. And it was pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Brother Mike. Uh, <laughs> can I borrow your cheat sheet? Brother G, what did you have as a child that kids don't have today? You know that was that was a tough one uh, coming up in in the year span that we've we've come up with uh, or in. I'd have to look back and say you know dirt roads. <laughs> you know, being able to be a kid and run around barefooted and, and as Kenneth said, not to have electronics, but to swing on a grapevine or. Uh, slip off from the house and go to the creek and just play in the woods and and I, I think having friends in, in other words people young kids to uh, you know be in the woods and play army or cowboys and Indians and things like that that you know it sort of helped us in a way to be uh, more viable as it deals with being social with people. I, I see sometimes uh, some young kids are lacking the ability to be uh, social in a way that it brings uh, good character. Mm. Wow. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Brother Ron. Well, 
one thing that, as I was thinking about this, um, a lot of people don't have landlines anymore. And, and not only landlines, but as I was thinking about this, it, it brings me and, and re reminds me of a certain instance when somebody had spent the night over our house and was friends with my little brother, Daniel. And this certain <laughs> someone had needed to use the phone to call their parents. So, yes, the phone is right there. So he proceeds to walk over, pick it up, and look at it and go, well, how do you use this? We had a rotary dial. How many remember the rotary dial? You know. So just, just that, that little bit of age difference there went from rotary dial to touch tone. You know, that's what he was used to. And so I can say some of the, you know, things, and, and I know you guys different from me, but you know, I, I had a rotary dial growing up, landline. You know, a lot of you kids have no idea what a landline is anymore. That poor kid, whoever that was. Man, <laughs> turned out great, though. Yes, he was a great, yes. Question number three. What were the three happiest moments in your lives so far? Three happiest moments in your lives so far. December 28, 1973. Me and Nene got married. October 25th, 1974. My sister's like, so, sorry, don't tell my age. <laughs> Might have been 84. <laughs> and uh, July 25th, 1984. I forgot what happened that year. Good answer. So uh, let it be known, anniversary... My sister was born before me, and then I was born. Those yeah. were our birthdays. What, so what about one more? Oh, one more good part. February 19th, 1980. February 19th, 1980. That was me and Renee's new birthday. Ah, when you guys got born again that day. Yes. Okay. Wow. Brother Mike. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd have to go along with those lines as well, uh, having children born and grandchildren as well. Great times also is, is, your, is when you got married. Yep. And not only that, but your anniversaries, you know, that, that yep. come after yep. that. I, I believe that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, life does hold a lot of things that we could continually talk about. But the greatest, <clears throat> the greatest moment is not only when, when I got saved. Of course, I was 30 when I got right with the Lord. Yep. Uh, but also... The, the times when my children were saved as well. Yes. To be able to uh, know in your heart that, you know, God's got them now. That right. th they're in the family of God is, yes, sir. to me, is probably the biggest uh, blessing. That's powerful. Yes, sir. Good brother Ron. Again, that's, that's kind of the same thing I had in mind, you know, when, when I was able to get married. My wonderful wife, Christy. That is your name, right? No? Oh, sorry. You still her from where? Arizona. Arizona. She's yep. a, yeah. So that's where I met her. And and, uh, and then, of course, finding out that we're going to have children, each of those moments were very happy, you know, to, to be able to have that. And, uh, and especially even with, with the little one, many of you might know or might not know, the things that she went through when she was born and, and be able to um, see how God come through and all of that was a very happy moment. Man, that's a miracle, baby. It really is. If if, if y'all don't know uh, the Schrader's youngest daughter's story, ask them, please. I'll leave it there. All right, so this next question is probably a a hard one. This is probably one where we're going to learn some stuff, and it's a humbling one. So I'm going to ask it now. You ready? What mistakes taught you the most about life? Go ahead. <laughs> Do I get passed on that one? <laughs> no passes. Sorry. 
Well, after thinking about it, this is this is a, what I came up with. Uh, it says a mistake is it's, that's a product of a bad choice. And uh, I've learned in that, in bad choices and in mistakes we make, it don't affect just ourselves, but it affects everyone close to us, everyone around us, and uh, that's a lesson that's not a good one all the time. <laughs> And uh, uh, that, and that, that's that. In in, in marriage, uh, I got to read this one. <laughs> in marriage, it, it's on making important decisions. Always, always be in agreement. Always be in agreement. Uh, because when you're in agreement, life will just be so much better. <laughs> yeah, you know the Long Ranger and Tano. Yeah, uh, you know yeah. they were in yeah. agreement. Uh, Batman and Robin, they were in agreement. Yeah, and and they always beat the bad guys when they were in agreement. If you get that, see there you go. Five <laughs> lessons from Lone Ranger. Yeah, go ahead, Brother Mike. You know that's a tough one. Uh, we've we've all made uh, mistakes in our life. I, I can remember when I was young and. Uh, a big part of my life is was when we actually, I actually lived with my grandmother, and and I can remember uh, based on some of the decisions I made at that time, and and she would look at me and she would be like, "I don't know if you're ever going to make it." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I was thinking, "Well, you you could be right," but you know, the uh, the important thing is is that hey, I'm still here. I did make it. To yes. Yep. But you know, uh, I, I don't. I try not to focus too much on on the bad or the negative, because if I do, sometimes it will steer my direction in the wrong way. Uh, there are a lot of encounters that no, I know that we all have in our life that we could uh, talk about and probably get sympathy for. But uh, the important thing is, is to me, is is that. Uh, for every decision that we make in life, there are consequences for it. Mm -hmm. And and we do uh, have to work things out. When there, there was a time, as an example, uh, as a young man, when I, I started a different phase in my life and parted ways with my immediate family and, and went and lived uh, somewhere else, uh, simply due to the fact that I didn't have a, a, a true father figure in my life. So sometimes when we don't have father figures in our life, to be taught as a father would teach us, we make decisions that could be detrimental. Uh, but, you know, thank God for grace, amen? Yeah, yeah. That God <laughs> has a way to uh, bring you into places and actually give you, give you mentors, God gives us mentors that will uh, impart into our lives with great, great wisdom. And so there was a span in my, in, in my life to where I was headed down the wrong path. And, and I can see now how God directed my life mm. to put me in the path of, uh, again, some great mentors that were godly people. <clears throat> Uh, prior to that, I didn't have any godly people in my life, but God moved me into an area uh, where I could begin to see God. Because prior to that, I couldn't see Him. I, I was blind to Him, but as, as father figures moved into my life, and I seen how the love of God uh, comes through fathers. Yeah. Because prior to that, I was I was against authority. Uh, some people would would call me a juvenile delinquent, <laughs> you know, gang related type mentality. Or worse. But or worse, you're exactly right. Now, how did you know? <laughs> but uh, God is God is a great God, mm -hmm. and there there have been a lot of mistakes and. In my life, of course, but I thank God that uh, I found Jesus. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes. But we do need fathers in our lives. The Bible tells us that we have not many fathers, but we need many fathers. Yeah. We need many people that mentors us and gives us good advice and good direction and points this way, that, that yeah. it's all about Jesus. Yes, very good. All right, picture this. Night? No, I'm kidding. I don't even know the day. Um, <laughs> as I thought about the some of the mistakes that I made, um, I, I do recall when I was a child, uh, I had lied about some shoes. Um, long story short, I had to write Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It's the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you live long on the earth. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but uh, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You still remember that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> How many times did you have to write? Well, originally it was a thousand times, <laughs> and there was grace given to me, and I had to do a 500. Oh. But, hey, Brun, how old were you? Like 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 12. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, that, I, I really believe that was ordained by God, uh, the, the correction, not the fact that I, I lied. <laughs> but, you know, that, that stuck with me. You know, and all through my teen years and even into now, I can say pretty confidently that I have always honored my parents. You know, e even when, when I done wrong and they had to correct me, it was never, well, you don't know. You know, I always showed honor to my parents and, and, and the dad that I have to be able to see, you know, a man that always supplied for his family, that was always a father. You know, there's so many times Growing up that I would see, you know, I grew up in Michigan, so lots of snow. And we, we'd be off for winter break, and, and we, we'd build igloos, and we'd stash up snowballs. And we'd be ready when my dad come home. Now, keep in mind, there was three of us doing this. <laughs> and, and, and to be able to have the, a dad that, knowing he was tired now, didn't think about that then, but I know he had to be tired, but he still took the time to play and just and just have that time where we had memories with him you know and so he would of course he did three against one and and he'd be making snowballs trying to eat have it from all different directions you know and then you know just being able to pile on top of them and and wrestle with them and he'd sling us around and just you know just we'd go flying well <laughs> one day that stopped but, you know, still, it, he did it with, with grace. You know, he's like, okay, okay, don't want to hurt you guys. That's enough. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I thank God for the, the dad that I had, you know, that I was able to see uh, him study the word, you know, at, at night. You know, when everyone else is asleep, I'd get up, get a drink of water or something, you know, see my dad studying the word. You know, and to have a dad that, that loves God and, and brings us up the way that we're supposed to be, you know, that's, that's awesome to be able to have, especially in, in this age. You know, there, there's so many fatherless homes. And, and I, I guess I've kind of gotten off track, but, you know, one of the other things that I've learned that go in line with that, the mistakes that I've made is, is I've always been a very straight talker. You know, and if it hurts your feelings, then, you know, too bad. And, and I would point blank to say what needs to be said. And when it come to my, my girls, and it, I come from a family of all boys. I got four brothers. And I so badly wanted a son, but I wouldn't trade my girls for anything. But, you know, I guess God knew I had to be softened. And there's so many times that I can think back that I was probably too stern and to see the heartbreak that I caused. It's hard. And so...
God began to use those times to show me how to be softer, still with truth, but how to do it in greater love. I'm going to stop now before I start crying. Yeah, that's a powerful lesson. Here's the next question for you guys. This will be a little more easy to digest. What do you enjoy most about being a father? Getting gifts on Father's Day? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Uh, good answer. Good answer. Seriously, the thing I enjoyed most about being a father is watching two little kids grow up to be a blessed and successful adults and marry and have awesome uh, mate and uh, a little Eddie Kate. Their little grandbaby. Does that count as being a happy father? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you started it. <laughs> but that, that's, uh, that yes, sir. is true. And, and, uh, and it just helps me to have a, a sense of accomplishment in life that I haven't just done as bad as Satan has tried to convince me that I've done. And uh, that, I mean, he is a liar anyway, so. That's right. He's the father so, of it. Yeah. Says. Yeah. So, to me, that that's uh, good. It helps me feel like I've maybe did something right. <laughs> you did a lot right. I'll vouch for that. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. That's it. Brother Mike, what do you enjoy most about being a father? You know, if you'd asked me that, like, what, 30 years ago, my answer would have been different than what it is now. Uh, being able to grow up with a family is, is an awesome thing. Of course, you know, we make the scrapbooks, we have the memories. Uh, I knew this one was going to be a hard one. You know, just to be able to grow with your children and experience their joy and uh, seeing things that helps them develop them, trying to protect them from the things that would harm, harm them. You know, life itself is, uh, is a joy, especially to have family involved with you. I couldn't imagine going through life not having a family. Uh, sorry. You know, there's times where you, you look at you look into the face of God and you think, you know, how much more we could be blessed uh, when you look at your children as well. But the great joy is, is that I, I know God's hand is, is upon his people. It's upon all of us. Uh, the great times that we have, you know, with each other is, is very important. And I think that that joy in itself, uh, to me, the true joy, the eternal joy is wrapped up in people. It's not in things. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's it. And so that's why in my older age, uh, I'm not so much worried about things anymore. <laughs> I know if you're young, you probably don't bear witness with that, but <laughs> being older... Your your outlook changes, but uh, I've been blessed with, with a family. Yes, sir. Beautiful family. All right, Brother Brian. Well, what I enjoy most is being able to see my girls' personalities develop. You know, there, there's so many times that I just sit back and, and you know, it's either... I'm just by myself or I mentioned something to Christy and just 
and joy and, and just go, man, just in awe at how you see their personalities develop. You know, that's that that's what I enjoy, being able to, to hear my girls laugh, you know, and, and just have fun and, and have that, that time where even if I'm not in the same room, it just it gives me great joy when I hear them laughing when when they're when they're goofing off and just having fun, you know, and and you know, it's more prevalent with my little one, but my older one still sometimes does it. She's a teenager now. But I'm I'm laying and, and they just come and put their, their head on my chest and I get to put my arm around them. You know, those are enjoyable moments that you have and just being able to, to still have that that moment that you can go, I love you, you know, and, and, and they say it back even though, you know, they want to be goofy about it, you know, and, and I tell them how beautiful they are, then I just get that one of those faces that they get from Christy, you know, if you know Christy, you know what type of faces she can make and, <laughs> and just be sporadic like that, but that's what I enjoy. Awesome. So we're going to two more things here. One more question, and then in prayer, I'm going to catch you guys off guard. I'm going to ask each of you to just pray and release a Father's blessing over us as spiritual kids here at the church. But the last question is this. Very simply, give us any closing statements you might have, any closing thoughts, just anything that you want to share about fathering. Anything. Go ahead. That's difficult, Dave. Um, I, I, I do know that uh, when children are obedient to their parents, it just um, makes it so much easier to be a parent. Just as when we're obedient as, as Christians to our, to our God that we serve. Wow, yes. That... Uh, I'm sure he enjoys it better when we're, you know, somewhat obedient. And, and uh, so I guess the only thing I could say is uh, God help us all to be more obedient so we can be better kids to our Father. That's a powerful, powerful lesson. Yes, sir. That, it is a tough question. Um, you know, I'm thinking when you was asked that question, of course, I would read the question earlier, is about what kind of advice could you give children? You know, one, one to me is children honor your parents, that it may be well with you. Yeah. Take the garbage out, make your bed up, take your socks when you take them off, pull them right side out. <laughs> uh, but to be able to, uh, you know, love mom and dad, and, and parents, as children as well, and not take each other for granted. Uh, because we need each other. And there's a lot to be said as it deals with, with honor. Uh, I could preach a message on that, but it's important that we honor one another, not just family members, but each other as well. Yeah. That shows true character. And, and your integrity in life. Probably one of the biggest things that I, I can say is thinking back on in Ephesians, fathers provoke your children not to wrath. One, one of the things that I learned years ago is always take time to think about how you want to approach a situation, how you want to respond. You know, and, and it's not just as a father, but it's in anything that you do, that you take time. You don't respond out of emotion because when you respond out of emotion, you're going to destroy someone else's emotion. Oh. And so that's, that's what I can say as a father. Take time because I, I actually look back and seen that in action in my life, you know, when I've done things and... What was first thing? Go to your room. Well, I'll be there in a little bit. And I, I could realize 
after looking back that my parents didn't want to respond out of anger because so many times when you respond out of anger, you go a little too far. And so I can say that that's probably one of the things in my life that I has really stuck with me is, is not to respond out of emotion. Take time, calm down, and seek God how you need to approach anything that you do. Powerful. Very powerful. Well, church family, I know um, I was always, well, dad introduced me to the fact that in the Jewish culture, it was a big deal for the parents, the fathers, to speak of father's blessing over his children. And just, I think there's so many benefits to us recipients of that blessing. One is that you're hearing your spiritual father speak powerful truths into your life. They're, they're prophesying. They're speaking it. Uh, another is just the fact that you know that the Father, he's thoughtful of you. So I want to ask each of you gentlemen, I, I didn't put this in the notes, so this is coming straight from their heart here. Um, in closing today, will each of you just, I don't know if you want to pray it or just speak it, but release a, a Father's blessing upon us here at Life Chapel. You want me to get some music to make it all feel good? <laughs> I'm kidding. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. So let's just be like church family. Let's just like pray. Let this be our prayer yeah. time. Receive this yeah. this morning. Okay. Uh, like the word says about uh, Abraham, he said they call him Father Abraham, and uh, as Christians, as we receive, as we receive uh, our Lord Jesus. Uh, he took. He bore the sins of the world. He he bore everything on the cross, and he became uh, sin that we might become righteous. And and like like Abraham, uh, we have received the blessings of Abraham through through his death on the cross. And Abraham was a man that was. Uh, I think the word says he was. Uh, had much land, much cattle, much riches. And when riches is used right, there is nothing wrong with riches. It's a good thing. It's a blessing. It's part of our, our inheritance, in fact, as Christians. We just have to use it in the right respect. And I just want to just uh, thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I just pray, Father, that the blessing of Abraham, Father, be upon this these this congregation, these people, Lord. Father, that the, the power to, to gain wealth, Father, that we might establish your covenant in this earth, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, that each and every one, Father, that, will, that they will receive that blessing, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. And I thank you that health and peace and prosperity and love and all the promises of all of your promises to us, Father. I thank you, Lord, that we just speak it over this people, Lord, over each one. And I thank you that it's in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we just proclaim it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, as a blessing, we release it over our children. As a father... Father, I just speak that the blood of Jesus and covering our children brings forth strength and power. Lord, your word says that for us to number our days, and Father, I, I, I just ask right now, God, that the days be many, they be multiplied. And Father, as we lay our hands upon our children, Father, we just speak uh, strength into their life, a covering, Father, of, uh, of, of health, of wholeness, of sound minds, of prosperity. Father, I thank you that fresh bread and new wine be multiplied in their lives. All that they put their hands to do, Father, I declare it blessed as a father. 
Lord, we'll give you thanks and we'll give you praise in, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that we have as fathers to pour into our children. Lord, every time they leave the safety of their home, Lord, that you will have angels charged around our children. Lord, that we will always respond in love. Lord, that, that they will prosper in the things that they set their hands to do. That they will have spiritual discernment in every situation. Lord, as they come and as, as they go, Lord, that they will be blessed. Lord, the things that are poured into them will cu be cultivated and not just lie dormant in their lives. Everything that has been ordained from the foundations of the earth, all the blessings that have been spoken into the lives of our children, that they will come to pass and they will be fulfilled and they will grow beyond what we have and what we've been able to do. Bless them in everything that they do in Jesus' name. We receive that. If you receive that, say a big amen. 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 Fathers, I want to encourage us. Let's release a blessing over our children. If you still got them in the house, let's verbally release that into their lives. Well, church family, can we give a big thanks to Ron, Brother Mike, and Brother Kenneth this morning? Here, let's, let's honor our elders. <laughs> hey, with that being said, I pray a blessing on you guys today. Have a wonderful week. Um, we will see if you, if you can on Wednesday. Uh, we will have our uh, regular Bible study in the back, kids, church, teens, youth, all that good stuff will happen Wednesday. But if we don't see it to then, we'll see you next week. Bye, you guys. Be blessed.